With the well-deserved success and general positive reception of Diablo 4's second season, many players praised the quality of life changes, the vampiric skill system, and the addition of the word bosses. Among these, Duriel is the most sought after, since his loot is the rarest and most powerful. The boss is a cakewalk for a decently built character, however, in order to summon him, players need to collect living steel from Helltides. And this can be a tedious task, especially when compared to the similar, but much more fun and player-friendly, Blood Harvest. My name is Tiver, and in this video we'll take a deep dive into the mechanisms of how the new living steel chests operate, despawn and respawn, and how you can use this knowledge to your advantage and optimize how you farm living steel. Let's start with something simple the cost of opening a living steel chest. The average player would skip over this part of the video, saying, what about the cost? It costs 300 aberrant cinders to open a chest, it's that simple, isn't it? Well, no. For some reason, even if it says that you need 300 cinders to open a chest, you actually only need 280. In fact, you can open a living steel chest even if you have as low as 280 aberrant cinders on you. Number two, the number of chests. There can be either two or three living steel chests up at the same time, and this number depends on which zone is affected by the Helltide. If the Helltide is in Skosklan or Kajistan, there will be three living steel chests present on the map at the same time. For any other zone, this number is only two. For example, this Helltide only affects the region of Kajistan, therefore you'd expect three chests being there at any given time. Clear? Good. So far, everything has been relatively straightforward, but there is an additional twist to the spawning of living steel chests, and the understanding of this mechanism separates a decent Helltide farmer from an efficient one. The living steel chests, similarly to mystery chests, respawn at another location on the top of the hour. In practice, this means that at exactly the top of the hour, for example at 6 o'clock 0 minutes, 5 o'clock 0 minutes and so on, the chests disappear from their original positions and respawn somewhere else. If you open the chest before this reset, then you'll get to open the newly spawned ones after the respawn. This doubles the number of chests you can potentially open during one Helltide and dramatically change the optimal farming method for living steel because ideally you'll want to open all living steel chests before this reset and all of them after the reset as well. Now this is not always possible since the Helltide can end at the top of the hour, in this case there is no respawn, or it can begin very close to the top of the hour in which case there is simply not enough time to farm the required aberrant cinders before the reset. Nevertheless, an experienced living steel farmer should always maximize the number of chests opened during Helltide by taking advantage of this mechanism. And that's it. Hopefully this guide has been useful for you and maybe you learned some tricks on how to make the grind for living steel just a little bit less painful. Thanks for watching. And see you next time.